Hi, everybody. It is January 12, 2019. Have you heard about the Green New Deal? The Green New Deal's sudden popularity is a reason for climate change optimism. Sorry, I was just shutting my window. Um, yeah, well, this is the problem with people accepting lies. Lies and lies and lies and lies. When you accept lies, then you are easy prey to be continually manipulated into believing every lie afterwards. Look at this, you know, the young. Oh, I'll show you how the young are being indoctrinated in our public school system. Green New Deal. Now, anybody looking at this picture would understand this has been deliberately engineered. Someone is paying for all of these kids to occupy Congress. Well, I think you should look into the Green New Deal because I do think that it will be passed in some measure, though it doesn't really matter because we're kind of, well, we've been implementing a whole lot of the Green New Deal anyway. Our federal agencies, which I'm going to show you in a second. Yeah, so guess what? Oh, the Green New Deal. Well, this was, I guess, proposed by that new nutcase, Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah, that democratic socialist. Ah, uh, boy. You know, we couldn't even get rid of the old nutcases. And these are the nutcases on the left. We just added more. We added more. Unbelievable. The Green New Deal is really popular even among Republicans. Okay. We don't have two parties. Please. We don't have two parties. And we don't have any party that represents the people. So why are so many I just still kind of stuck in that paradigm and believing that good things are happening and good things are going to happen. And these people don't represent us. Everything is a staged game, even with these protests. So interesting. They're okay. So the sweeping proposal to generate 100% of the nation's electricity from clean sources within the next 10 years, upgrade the United States power grid, invest in energy efficiency and renewable technology. And I'll, I'll show you that our federal agencies are on it. They've been on it. Uh, they continue to be on it. Doesn't matter if Trump is in the White House or not. Uh, and yes, provide training for jobs in the new green economy. How long have we been listening to this? For a long time. Obama, we will create new jobs in the green economy. You know, we just listen to these people speak words and nothing ever happens to benefit the people. 92% of Democrats support the idea, including 93% of liberal Democrats, 90% of moderate to conservative Democrats, but 64% of Republicans, including 75% of moderate to liberal Republicans, 57% of conservative Republicans, also back the policy goals outlined in the Green New Deal. 88% of independents endorsed the policies as well. And yeah, it's all about how you can pitch it. How do you pitch? You know, we're, we're oh God, you can't just you know, directly, straightforward, clear communication um, in this country. You need pitches and you need manipulations and you need to understand your audience and, and you know, where they're coming from and, and how they emotionally feel about something so that you can present information well enough to manipulate them into getting what you want. Yay! I can't stand it. You know, it's like everything is 
Oof, boy. You know, Obama. The brand Obama. Why can't we just have a simple life where, you know, people speak the truth and do their job and don't hurt other people and everything has become just so convoluted, so complicated, so... Well, that's what happens when you have centralized government, which we do now. The federal government's centralized. Uh, very, very hard to backtrack from there. Not when this federal government is dictating everything. All right, well, uh, why do they have to pitch anything? Well, they have to maintain that bipartisan support. Well, but didn't they get it? The survey here, Republicans didn't know. Because in the survey, they didn't mention who was proposing this. The 40 progressive members of Congress. Isn't it interesting that if they did uh, pose the questions with a little bit more detail, that it was Ocasio-Cortez and the progressive Democrats, do you think the Republicans would be on board? Why wouldn't they be on board? Aren't they on board with the proposals? But everybody's about personality. Everybody's at that low level of consciousness where the personal matters. Like the person who proposed it, Ocasio-Cortez, this crazy nutcase. Um, well, then everybody would be on the right. Republicans, you'd lose an awful lot of them just based on who proposed it. So they're not about substance. Principle, right? No. Well, you know, this, uh, I, I just, it's really, look, I was a Democrat my entire life. Um, this party has changed. <laughs> the Democratic Party has really changed. Now, the Republicans appear far more mature. The Democrats, well, it's kind of like how this person described Ocasio-Cortez. She sounds like a poorly educated but well indoctrinated young communist with a ninth grade mentality. Yeah, ninth grade mentality. All of the fighting and the insanity and, but it's not about that generation. Look at Pelosi and all the others. I, it's, it's embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. Anybody who could be a Democrat today, you should be really ashamed of yourself. Um, that you have not, what, what was that campaign that went on and may still be going on? Walked out or walked away? Oh, I, I can't remember, but all of these Democrats who just walked away from the party. Um, how anybody could support these people, it, it's beyond me. All right, well, the Republicans do act a little bit more mature, and uh, but they're still voting not in your best interest, but in their best interest and in the best interest of the United Nations. So regardless of who proposed this Green New Deal. You should be very concerned, very concerned about it because this will put Agenda 2030 right on the track, the high-speed, high-speed track. And I am, I'm predicting radical, radical changes, not for the better, but radical changes happening within the next two years. All right, so um,
this is more about her and then gets into yeah a Twitter war with a Republican aren't you tired of it aren't you tired of this this ninth grade behavior coming out of these people I mean the Twitter wars and Trump is right there with them uh, five things Ocasio-Cortez does not want you to know about her Green New Deal. All right, this is the face. Look, this woman did not uh, draft any kind of proposal for it. This woman is just the, hey, let's put what they consider to be a pretty face, young, um, progressive. We'll put her out front. She works for the United Nations, okay? She is not about freedom. She's not about your freedom. She's not about the Constitution. She's, she's what, about socialism and communism. How is it Americans can't get the radical changes in Americans themselves? I mean, it's so shocking to see so many Americans who are, you know, well, Constitution, who cares? You know, who cares if they're all violating it up in Washington, D.C.? And, well, who really cares if they're representing us or corporations or who cares about anything but they have kids I've heard you know versions of what I just said coming out of the mouths of former friends they have kids all of the opportunities that they enjoyed they don't give a shit about their own children having those opportunities so yeah, we've got a real problem with care and honesty. Uh, the Green New Deal will dramatically reshape the U.S. economy and add tens of trillions of dollars to the national debt. Radical plan would force families to pay more to heat, cool, provide electricity for their homes. Your utility bills will skyrocket. Your taxes will skyrocket. Everything you buy all products, all food will skyrocket because it will drive up the cost for businesses, farmers, government organizations, their operating costs, which it always trickles down to the consumer. Americans would have to power their homes with renewable energy, such as wind and solar power. And isn't it interesting that they are doing that global dimming? of the sun. They want you to switch over to solar power when we have man controlling the weather, our atmosphere, whether or not we're going to get sun. Yeah, switch to solar power. Um, every home and business in the United States would have to be upgraded for the state of our energy efficiency, comfort, and safety. Agenda 2030, you know, switch over all of your appliances to Energy Star so that all of the sensors in your Energy Star appliances, well, they'll have audio, they'll have cameras, yeah, our appliances. Our appliances will be spies. Um, a slew of massive government social programs and mandates would be created. It also calls for a basic income, single-payer health care, and a federal jobs guarantee. And many scientists have said there's no good evidence global warming will be catastrophic. All we know that. There's no evidence that global warming is happening or climate change is happening. Naturally, a lot of evidence that man is changing the climate with man's weather, weather weapons. So um, I'm going to show you how our federal agencies are already uh, implementing many plans, projects. Uh, they're in the works. Everything that I just spoke of. Um, you have not felt the real noose tighten around your neck yet, 
yet, but all of our federal agencies are, virtually all, are already working to transform, reshape the country. Now, this is this is about Common Core. So let me just oh go off on that tangent one second. Um, has Donald Trump ever mentioned Common Core since he became president? Because he was sure mentioning it a lot on the campaign. You want to make this country great again? You start with the younger generations. You give them an education that allows them to exercise their critical thinking skills, to develop as individuals. You make America great again by teaching real history instead of the bullshit history that they teach the kids. You teach them about the Constitution. Oh, and that we are a constitutional republic. You get Wi-Fi out of the schools, the Wi-Fi that is very dangerous and damaging their health and their brains. You get rid of Common Core that has so dumbed down all of these kids now. The standards, I mean, they're laughable and it would be a joke if it weren't so dangerous. You know, Trump 2015 Tea Party. I am totally against Common Core. 2016 rally in Oklahoma. We're going to bring education back to the states and back to the people and the parents. And you know what? A lot of people voted for this man just based on that. But he was elected and he quit talking about Common Core and he appointed uh, Betsy Davos, a proponent of top down education, which signaled a reversal of his campaign policy. Yeah, really tired of all of the Trump supporters that I just got a comment underneath my last video. You called Trump a liar. You've got nerve, sister. Unsubbed. I, I, I don't understand the brains that can work delusions and justifications and uh, I don't. I'm sorry, I can't. I never have been able to. Um, but he's not draining the swamp. He is filling it, filling it, filling it more and more with swamp and swampettes. And, you know, fine. Focus on the wall and think that he's doing fabulously. Don't look into the details. Davos signs on to globalist United Nation education agenda for the United States. U.S. Education Secretary Betsy Davos signed on to the radical global declaration that calls for, among other absurdities, brainwashing children to believe in the United Nations backed ideology of total government known as sustainable development. Agreed to Last week in Argentina, and this was September 10, 2018, uh, the governments purported to commit their nations to globalized brainwashing under the guise of education, finalizing the destruction of traditional education in America and replacing it with a total indoctrination program aligned with the systems of some of the world's most murderous autocracies. Americans should be outraged. Crickets! declaration produced at the first ever education working group, uh, the G20 network of governments and dictators, dictatorships. It was titled Building Consensus for Fair and Sustainable Development. How free nations can build consensus on education. Bringing common core to the world. That's how they're going to do it. Keeping the ordinary people dumb, but the quote-unquote elite like Betsy Davos, do you think her kids are going to public school? Holy Jesus. You know, Americans, this has been going on my entire life. 
It's like you bend over and take it. No matter how painful, no matter how obvious it is that they are treating you like garbage, you just bend over and take it and you never stand up. And I'm talking about most Americans, you know. The representatives in Congress that you know are corrupt and don't represent you because I have spoken to so many people. Well, yeah, I vote, but yeah, I know they represent corporations. But hey, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? There's nothing we can do. Holy shit. Yeah, really tired of it. Really tired of it. So, you vote for people, you put them in Congress, or you think, and um, they then start representing all the corporations. Uh, you pay more for health care, uh, your education, the education of your children gets worse and worse. Uh, your taxes are raised continually. And <laughs> you just take it. You pay for a health care for your representatives in Congress that is supreme. Oh, right, and Congress, yeah. Uh, they were exempt from Obamacare. But you, uh-uh, you weren't exempt. But your representatives that you vote for were exempt. You continually just pay their salaries, their health care, everything. And then their lifelong retirement. What, do they keep the same salaries after they're out of Congress? And you get screwed. Your pensions, you know, that you're so wanting for retirement will be far less than you expect if they're going to be there anyway. What the hell are you doing? So, Betsy Davo signs on to the United Nations Education, Consensus Education. Education is the foundation of personal development as it provides children, youth, and adults with the knowledge, skills, values, and the attitudes necessary to reach their full potential, declared the education mis uh, ministers, including some whose regimes torture and slaughter opponents of communism or Sharia law, demanded more data gathering and mining. You know, uh, one of the uh, one of the Common Core and our federal government Department of Education sayings was from cradle to grave. They want full control over your children from cradle to grave. And they're going to just be collecting more and more and more and more and more data. <sighs> Spying on your children. Uh, demands further globalization of education, a process that has been underway for many years. For instance, it calls for international investment in education, a theme consistent with the ongoing globalization of education under the United Nations extremist education agency known as UNESCO. We commit to strengthening international cooperation. We commit to facilitating the internationalization of education, common core for all. It promotes the development of curricula, which have a strong focus on values and attitudes foster the inclusion of non-cognitive skills such as socio-emotional skills across the curriculum, which is basically educrat psychobabble to conceal a program of psychological conditioning aiming to bring about the values and attitudes demanded by the establishment in all children, vowed to provide education that supports better integration of common values like sustainable development more highly educated people who have higher incomes consume more resources than poorly educated people who tend to have lower incomes. That's in the United Nations toolkit for global sustainable you know, education. 
That is the middle and upper middle class, and that's why it's being destroyed. <sighs> Which is still posted online at UNESCO. So in this case, more education increases the threat to sustainability. That's why education is dumbing children down because they don't want any threat to their takeover of the world to create a very dark totalitarian 1984 communism on steroids we stress that access to quality education is a human right well the education ministers declared as if mass murdering communist tyrants had the same vision of quality education as liberty minded Christian parents in America. There's a reason why. You know, we have all of these illegal uh, immigrants coming into our country, refugees, migrants going into Europe because they want to destroy culture. If Betsy Davos can sit down at a table with communist dictators and, and those who are uh, the rulers of Muslim countries and come to some kind of consensus on education, then, and if that doesn't raise eyebrows, I don't know what the hell is wrong. But you know what? It's not just the younger generation who has been dumbed down. Something has gone on with my generation, baby boomers, because a whole lot of them don't give a shit about anything. And they don't want to know. And they don't want to use their brains. They don't want to critically think. They don't, eh, who cares? I had opportunity and I was able to amass a whole lot of material things. So I'm fine. Who gives a shit about anybody else? Yeah, I am. It, it gets really unbelievably. Uh, federal agencies, U.S. Department of Education, Green Ribbon Schools. This has been going on. You know, this, this is not a surprise that Betsy Davos would sign on to United Nations Education for Americans. Not a surprise at all. If you have been following what's been going on, this woman is not about getting rid of Common Core. Trump's appoint. This is a Trump appointment, okay? You should be so outraged, all you Trump supporters. Unbelievably outraged that this guy, Trump, appointed Betsy Davos, who didn't have any education experience. She is working for the United Nations, pushing sustainability in our classrooms. So it's not a surprise that she signed on to the globalist United Nation education agenda. Well, public schools, green ribbon schools, the aim of U.S. Department of Education Green Ribbon Schools is to inspire schools, districts, and institutions of higher education to strive for the 21st century excellence, reduce environmental impact and cost, improve the health and wellness of schools, students, and staff, and provide effective environmental and sustainability education. Sustainability education. They give out awards to schools, 46 schools and six districts, honored today at the 2018 U.S. Department of Education Green Ribbon Schools ceremony. That included our Commerce Department, U.S. Secretary of Elementary and Secretary Education, NOAA, Director of the Center for Green Schools at the U.S. Green Building Council. 
sustainability, authentic sustainability, learning and safe, healthy and inspiring environments. The Department of Defense education activity also has the green ribbon schools. Yeah, for our the military personnel living in bases all over the world for their children. Sustainability. And they go with they go with these organizations, National Green Schools Society, Green Schools Project, making the green difference. Climate change research grants, EPA. Wow. Trump got you out of the Paris Agreement? Really? Does it matter if he signs an agreement or not? Does it matter? When they're being, when it's all being implemented, does it matter what somebody says? When what you see is the opposite being done? Or did you, do, does it just feel good to feel like, oh, hey, maybe you have a savior syndrome that allows you to just believe my guy is doing great things. EPA, Smart Growth Network, partnership of government, business, civic organizations, all involved in implementing Agenda 2030 throughout our country. United States 2030 food loss and waste reduction goal. Reducing food waste will help the United States address climate change as 20% of total U.S. methane emissions come from landfills by keeping wholesome and nutritious food in our communities and out of our landfills. We can help address the 42 million Americans that live in food insecure households. Poverty, Agenda 2030. We've got to cure poverty in our country. Green Challenge, EPA, Sustainable Materials. Current participants, you want to see? In the Green Challenge, er, virtually every single state. And California, oh, yeah, you sure do have one hell of an organization all of these organizations, institutions, federal agencies involved in California. Sustainability. Colorado, Massachusetts and New York comes up a close, and Texas. Uh, I think they all pretty much buy for first place. But as you can see, our EPA has quite a lot of involvement in sustainability green challenges. And it's involved with all of these organizations to implement the United Nations Agenda 2030, which has not stopped and it just continues. And with the Green New Deal, wow, are you going to see you're going to really feel the financial kick to your pocketbook. So, do you think the Green Challenge has enough participants? Here, um, Community Stories, EPA helps communities achieve their goals. Yes, community Revitalization supports locally led community driven efforts to protect the environment, expand economic opportunity, revitalize neighborhoods. They provide the technical assistance to communities to help them reshape their communities in, a, uh, in accordance with Agenda 2030. Uh, let's just check out a couple of them. Here, Little Rock, Arkansas, EPA's consultant team, they focused new development on Main Street rather than spreading it through the region, requires 92% less land 
reduces driving by residents by 83 percent, uh, reduces pollutants each day, requires less household energy use, mixed use housing, walking Main Street, get them out of their cars. Fresno, California, downtown revitalization. Oh, new transit plans are underway as well. I don't know how long ago these community stories were published, but Fresno will be a stop on California's high-speed rail connecting Los Angeles and San Francisco. Do you hear Trump talking about any of this? No. No. You don't hear Trump talking about vaccines. You don't hear talk, him talking about Common Core. You don't hear him talking about how our federal agencies are working for the United Nations to reshape this country and deprive you of your property and freedom. You hear him talk about a wall. <sighs> Iowa. A flood compelled the city to reconsider its development vision, foster redevelopment and flood resilience. Designs included a new riverfront park that mitigate flooding transforming Gilbert Street into a vibrant mixed-use district, restoring a diverted creek to provide more green space on recreation, less stormwater runoff, reduce pollution from driving, help households use less energy due to more walkable and compact mixed-use development. This is Trump administration doing this. So please, come out of the savior syndrome. We've got the Department of Transportation implementing Agenda 2030, addressing climate change. Programs, policies are being initiated at the federal level through the U.S. Department of Transportation and additional federal agencies Yes, fast-growing sources of greenhouse gases, uh, gas emissions. Transportation sector is the largest and fastest. They want you out of your cars. State, local action and policies, transportation, the Federal Transportation Department puts pressure on state and local communities. How do they do it? Well, you ain't going to get any funding if you don't do this. Many states' local governments are setting greenhouse gas reduction goals. Many departments, federal agencies are mandating states produce a climate action plan before they get any grants or funding. Growing interest in climate change. Okay, I'll link below to everything. Our Department of Housing and Urban Development, the mission of the Department of Housing and Urban Development is to create strong, sustainable, inclusive communities. Inclusive and sustainable communities free from discrimination. Green Infrastructure and Sustainable Communities Initiative. This is HUD. HUD. Green homes and communities, green affordable housing, enterprise, green communities, green development center, green and healthy home initiative, local government guide for neighborhood development, green cities report, green impact zone, green building, green communities, green buildings. This initiative outlines six new guiding livability principles that will be used to coordinate federal housing, transportation, and environmental protection investments, HUD, Department of Transportation, EPA plan to make planning grants available to metropolitan areas and create mechanisms to ensure these plans are carried out through lo localities and more. And guess what? It's Agenda 2030, Climate Action Map, Local Sustainability Plans. Yeah, nothing has changed. Department of Commerce. Fourth Annual Sustainability and Circular Economy. U.S. Department of Energy Sustainability Awards. Going renewable.
The link is below to everything. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. They're just gaining more and more success with every agenda.